Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Today is going to be a tutorial on macro photography, on, on how I shoot macro photography. And this is going to be a start to finish, so you're going to see some stuff in the field. And then I'm going to bring it back here on the computer and show you how I work it up uh, in Photoshop. And uh, so yeah, so stick around and let's get to it. So here we are, found a couple flowers using my Fujifilm X-T3 with my 80 millimeter macro 2.8 lens. And what I'm looking for is sort of these hallway shots where, you know, it has a good foreground, good background, and you're, you're looking directly at what I want you to look at, which is that flower right on the right hand side. So I'm shooting at a nice short depth of field. So we will be working on this photo here next in Photoshop. All right, so here's a few images here that I'm going to work up. I'm going to work on this one next. And usually the first thing I do is I mess with the crop a little bit. So the crop, actually how it's shot is pretty good, That's, which is a 2 by 3 ratio. I'm going to see what it looks like by 16 by 9. Um, you know, I sort of like actually the original crop. So let's just clear that. And... I do like that, but I want to crop it just a little bit more. Maybe about right there is good. And usually what I want to do is darken around the subject a little bit. So I'm always a big fan of vignetting my images. Um, vignetting is right here. But I know when I vignette this, it's actually going to affect the actual flower. So I don't really want to do that maybe about right there to start with and then I'll go to my local brush right here and I'll bring my exposure down so now what I'm doing I'm just brushing um, just using a local brush to brush down the exposure so I'm actually just darkening down with my actual brush there and that's pretty good um, I might, might add another brush just to darken that down a little bit more and as you can see I use a big feather um, that width you see on the circle controls the feather so that helps um, control uh, the exposure a little bit instead of it being so hard it'll feather it out it um, makes it a lot softer and the bigger you go the the softer the feather will get so I'm gonna do that again so I'm gonna darken this down just a little bit more that might be a little bit too much, but then I'm going to go back over to the global adjustments. And I'm going to brighten the whole thing up. And as you can see, I shrunk it down a little bit. That helps me out. I don't know why, but I'll shrink it down. I don't know. I can just see it better when it's a little bit smaller. You just sort of see the whole thing. I know it's probably not best for YouTube, but um, I'll bring it up a little bit bigger now. But I'll usually shrink it down so I can see the whole thing when I do these global adjustments or even local adjustments like that I can just see it a little bit better all at once so not nece so necessarily so not necessarily like a bigger screen is some, sometimes like all better sometimes a smaller screen is better so I'm just sort of playing with each adjustment here I'm gonna go down a little bit on highlights a little bit more on shadow and bring up the whites a little bit just give it a little bit more of a punch and then I don't want to go too down on the blacks otherwise it just looks too contrasty so blacks are pretty much going to stay the same clarity I'm going to go down just a hint just to give it a little bit of soft softness just a little bit and it's so colorful, colorful already so I'm just going to leave the vibrance pretty much where it is. It's just at a plus three, which isn't that much. I'm going to bring the exposure up just a little bit more. So that's pretty much about it, everybody. I don't, I do a lot of my adjustments in raw. I shoot raw like 100% of the time. I would say 99% of the time. Um, you know, I just brought it up in Photoshop now. There's not really much else I want to do to it except for, I'll come down here to uh, convert to profile and then I'll bring it over to srgb because i'll post this to the web if i was going to print this i would leave it on adobe adobe rgb um, but i'm going to post this to the web so this is going to be 
I'm converting it over to sRGB. All right, so still I'm shooting at uh, ISO 80, um, low ISO, great smooth image, nice color, and F4 at shutter speed 320th. And right here I'm just going through these tulips and seeing which one I like best for focused and bokeh. And again, you know, I like that sort of hallway effect where I'm have a nice foreground and background and right there is sort of where I'm where I'm settling and I, I really like that one back in the left there. So I'm sort of focusing on that one and really um, paying attention to that one a little, a little bit more than the others. Creates some nice depth right there. I really like this image. This is a really nice selective focus right here on this flower over here. So what I'm going to do is, like I always like doing, is messing with the vignetting. So that'll help that sort of tunnel view that I like to create. That tunnel view meaning like it's you know, sort of that hallway view where it's create a nice foreground, nice blurry foreground, and then also a nice um, blurry background. So you know right what to look at, which is right here. Um, so I messed with the vignette just a little bit. And now I'm going to mess with, I'm going to go into the local adjustments again with that local brush. And bring down the exposure a little bit. So now I'm, now I'm just going to paint the exposure in, or down actually, around that area. And now once I painted that, I'll turn the mask on so you can actually see what's affected. So a, quite a bit of it is actually affected, not right here in the middle. I can actually go in and erase that if I want. Um, bring this feather up quite a bit. And you can see what I'm going to take out. But So I can take that out. I uh, turn that mask on so everything that's white is affected with the mask. I'm going to turn that off though. So now you can see um, what I painted over, what I painted darker is what is masks and what I erased is actually I'm taking out the mask a little bit because I don't want that darker part to affect what's actually in focus right there. So I'm sort of clicking here and there to um, create a little bit more of a brighter area right in the middle there. All right, I, uh, gosh, I sort of like that. Um, I actually also sort of like the crop. I'm not going to mess with it too much. I don't know if at all. Let's see what it looks like by 16 by 9. I don't know. I sort of like it. Uh, I sort of like 16 by 9. That's sort of cool. I like it either way, 16 by 9 or 2 by 3. Um, but for this one, I think I might go 16 by 9. I sort of like that. But I'm going to bring it in a little bit on the right still. And I like to use that grid, that um, rule of thirds grid. I'm going to go back to the global adjustments here, which is right here. And I'm going to bring everything up just a little bit. Because I brought everything down quite a bit. So I'm going to bring it back up. And now I'm going to play with the... I just played with exposure. And I'm going to play a little bit with the contrast. I'm going to bring contrast down just a hint. And I like to go up and down with all these sliders just to see how it affects it. Um, with the shadow. Bring down with the shadows a little bit. I'm going to bring the whites up. Whites always bring out, just make it pop a little bit more. I'm going to bring that up. You have to be careful with the blacks. You don't want to bring the blacks down too much. Uh... You are right there. It's really not that not that far down. We're talking like minus six, so it's not that much. Clarity as well. You have to be careful with clarity. Um, the more you go up, the I don't know the fake. It looks pretty fake. It has its own kind of unique look, though. If you're looking, if you're doing like a grunge cityscape, it looks pretty cool, but not necessarily for flowers. Actually, for flowers, you want to go the opposite way. If they go all the way down, it gives it that really soft kind of feel. But I don't want to go that far down, so I'll just, I'm just going to go down a little bit. Let's say minus 9 or 10. Uh, I'm going to bring the vibrance. Gosh, it's so colorful, colorful already. Pretty much going to leave where, where it is, and I don't really mess around with saturation too much. 
So that's pretty much where I'm going to keep it, everybody. I don't really know. I don't think I'm going to do anything else to it. Uh, I'm just going to open it in Photoshop just to save it. Um, and I'm also going to convert this to an sRGB image because it's, it's an Adobe RGB right now. Um, if I were to print it, like I've said before, I'd keep it as Adobe RGB. Um, but this is for the web, so I'm going to switch the profile over to sRGB and save that. And there we go. All right, you know where I'm going with this one. I'm going with that hallway shot again. Creating that nice depth of field in front and in and back. So this is a center image this time. No rule of thirds here. More symmetrical, uh, focusing on that tulip right in the middle. And I'm um, shooting at a little bit shorter depth of field as well. The last two are f4, and this one's a 2.8. So let's check this one out in, um, in Photoshop and uh, see how it's developed. All right, let's do our last one here. Um, we'll open up this guy. And see, once you start doing all these, it, they, you know, you sort of come up with your own style. Um, so, you know, I, I, you sort of get in the same routine of doing your own thing. So, you know, I'm going to go to vignette, bring the vignette down quite a bit. And this is a nice sort of centered, um, again, tunnel view, hallway view to create that nice blur in foreground and background. This one's, I'm just going to keep this one straight in the middle. Usually I like to use the rule of thirds where I put it in top left or right or bottom left or right. But um, since this one is sort of have this nice symmetrical view to it, I'm just going to keep it right there in the middle. Um, but I'm going to bring it down sort of quite a, quite a bit, I think, just to do a little bit more drastic one here. Sort of nice right there. Maybe a little bit too much. So I'm going to go back to the global global view, bringing up the exposure, and then bring down the highlights. I might actually bring down that contrast because it can get very contrasty, very quick, especially with reds, pinks. Um, I feel like all types of sensors have trouble with reds and pinks, and I've shot with Sony, Nikon, Canon, Canon, Fuji, Panasonic. All of them, so they they have a trouble with that. They have oh, they always have trouble with that type of color. So I always usually bring the contrast down a little bit with those. Um, all right, so I'm just keep playing with the sliders, and maybe right there, clarity. Maybe bring the clarity up on this one actually just a little bit, just for something different. Um, the dehaze I don't really like to mess with too much especially with flowers but again it's you know play with it see what you like it's actually not too bad so I'm gonna actually bring the the haze down a little bit and the vibrance it's so colorful already I'm not gonna mess with and I never really mess with the saturation um, so let's keep it there all right so I I like where this is at so I'm not really gonna do anything else to it except for Convert it to sRGB. And that's about it. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoy this little tutorial on you know, how I shot macro and then how I worked these up in Photoshop. So I hope you please subscribe and like and enjoy your uh, 20, 20 seconds of zen after this uh, video. I hope to see you next time. Thanks. Bye.